Hello, everyone. Welcome to yet another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. I am Shrikant Sukumar from Systems and Control, IIT Bombay. So we are well into the eighth week of our course on nonlinear and adaptive control. And I think it's evident to all of us that we are now in a very good position to be able to design um, control algorithms that drive autonomous systems such as the SpaceX satellite that you see in the background. Uh, we have looked at several different uh, sort of adaptive control designs by now. And I think all of you have gotten a very good hang of um, how we are going about these designs. In the last couple of lectures, specifically we were uh, sort of looking at this um, vector version of the adaptive integrator backstepping design right? and this is a, a rather powerful method if you may right? as you can see and the idea here is that you can use uh, the over parameterization in order to um, um, compensate for the fact that the unknowns are unmatched with the uh, control dynamics all right so this is uh, you know what i would say is a rather strong uh, you know positive of this adaptive control method so we looked at this in some detail in the past few lectures right um, and and so this is of course you know something that's uh, rather good. Um, we also showed how to construct the adaptive laws. Uh, we also showed most importantly how the second level uh, Lyapunov function is uh, in fact constructed. Right. So that's essentially was this guy. Okay. Um, so so yeah. I mean, I really hope that all of you got a very good feel uh, for design of adaptive controls for vector systems yeah we have looked at a lot at the scalar case um, but of course we also want to look at the vector cases uh, carefully yeah the vector case of course is uh, different only in the sense that uh, the lyapunov function now contains norms and norm squares instead of the typical scalar square quantities okay and of course, we had to do a little bit of careful bookkeeping in order to approve uh, these nice properties. Yeah, so that's uh, really, you know, I mean, I would really say that the differences are rather minor, um, and it's not, uh, you know, a significant uh, novelty in terms of the design method or anything. In fact, at every stage, you can find a parallel with the scalar method. We of course pointed out the big issue, and that is the requirement for in this case two parameters two estimates uh, to identify the same parameter theta yeah and we certainly want to get rid of this issue yeah and this is where the extended matching design method comes in yeah so i'm going to mark the lecture here we talked a little bit about the extended matching design and the fact that we are starting again with the scalar case system yeah just like before uh, but still i want to uh, mark the lecture right here just for the purpose of you know uh, making a new beginning on a new page that's all yeah uh, right so uh, if you look at the system like we said it is still the single integrator system amalgamated with a uh, control in the next stage yeah and that's really the idea here right um, and we of course want to do an extended matching design which means that well not it doesn't mean anything it's just a name the idea here is that we do not want to over parameterize yeah so let's look at what is the desired ideal control here right and the if you remember uh alpha one that is the desired ideal control is not uh, different from the uh week seven 
right? Because if you look at week seven, uh, the unknown case, if you see uh, the desired uh, XD is still something like this. And that's essentially what we will have here too. I mean, you just uh, different phi instead of an F, but otherwise it's the same. We don't know the parameter. Therefore, we replace it with an estimate multiplied by the phi uh, and then we cancel the, uh, sorry, we introduce a good term in the X1, right? So, so this is actually equal to um, X2 desired in our notation. And this is actually equal to x2 desired in our notation, right? Uh, now we of course just redefine states. We call the first state as x1, z1 equal to x1, and z2 is just the backstepping error again. Why? Because x2 is x2 is not really the control, so x2 cannot really be equal to x2 desired. So we do the next best thing. We try to make um, uh, x2 to chase the x2 desired. Yeah, right. Um, and we, of course, define theta tilde as theta minus theta hat as we do in all our adaptive control problems, right? So in the new states, we write the dynamics in the new states, of course. So the Z1 is just X1. So Z1 dot is just X1 dot. And that is X2 plus theta phi X1, right? Uh, and X2 can be written as Z2 plus alpha 1. So if I do that, I'm going to carefully rewrite these things. So this is, I'm going to write a few intermediate steps. This is equal to Z2 plus alpha plus theta phi X1. And I'm going to replace alpha uh, as Z2 minus theta cap phi X1, which is the same as Z1 minus C1 X1, which is the same as Z1. And then I have plus theta phi z1, right? Now, these two, of course, combine to give me theta tilde phi x1 or z1. It doesn't matter. Then I have a minus c1 z1 and a z2 here. Okay, that's it. And z2 dot is x2 dot minus alpha 1 dot, which is x2 dot is just the control. And alpha 1 dot has two pieces because alpha 1 is a function of x1 or z1 and theta cap. So this is del alpha 1 del x1 times x1 dot, which is what we plug in from here, and del alpha 1 del theta cap, right, times a theta cap dot. So we have not yet specified what this theta cap dot is. Okay, so we are not going to specify it now. Right, let's go on. Yeah, so we have the dynamics in the new variables z1 and z2. So the important thing to note is that theta cap dot is not yet assigned. Yeah. Now, what we do is, see in the earlier version, what we were doing was we had, as soon as we wrote a Z1 dot or an X1 dot in the earlier version, right? We immediately defined a V1 with the theta tilde and we came up with an update law with the theta cap. Yeah. Why we did this is because this is how we sort of understand backstepping, right? The handle the first state first, all aspects of the first state. So what we did was we defined the Lyapunov candidate V1, which ensured that the first state was negative semi, ensured that the uh, you know derivative of the Lyapunov function along the first state was negative definite or semi-definite at least, and then move on to the next state. So it was essentially uh, completely inspired by how backstepping goes. That is, you deal with the first state then you go to the next and so on and so forth. But now we sort of control our itch, you know, to do handle everything for the first state. Yeah. So we do, we do not define a theta cap dot. We do not define a V1 at all. Yeah. So the important thing is that theta cap dot is not assigned. V1 is not defined. Yeah. Unlike in week seven, uh, unlike, in V7. V1 is not defined, right? And because V1 is not defined, theta cap dot is also not assigned, right? And what do we do instead? Like I said, we control our itch and we define a combined Lyapunov function now. 
Yeah. And what is that? It's the same simple idea. I took the Z1 squared, then I take the Z2 squared, and I just have one theta tilde squared over two gamma appearing. Okay. No longer a second estimate and all that because I did not even create a first estimate. I did not create a first V1. Right. So I just am going to end up with the uh, you know final V and just one estimate. Yeah, at least that's my hope. And now I of course nicely uh, take the derivatives, right? And you know see if I can define a theta cap dot. Okay? So I have z1 z1 dot which is this z2 and a z2 dot which is this z2 dot is just uh, x2 dot minus alpha 1 dot which is del alpha 1 del x1 x1 dot which is the same as this and del alpha 1 del theta cap theta cap dot. So you see there is already another theta cap dot here. But the good thing is that theta cap dot is in fact known quantity, right? I mean, in the sense that I as a user am going to specify it. So even if it appears in my V dot, it's not a big deal. Okay, even if theta cap dot appears in my V dot, this is not going to be a big concern at all. Okay, so this is the idea. This is what sort of helps me. Right? And then of course we have the last term which is a usual term theta tilde theta cap dot over gamma yeah, in V dot. Great. Now I have the nice negative term typical in backstepping. Right? And then uh, there is a term I mean then I can club this term with the z2 right? which is u plus a z1 from here. And then all the terms which do not contain a theta tilde. Right. So I take u of course, z1 of course, then I have these two guys. Yeah, and then I have this guy. So because remember, theta cap dot cannot contain theta tilde. Right. If it does, then you have a problem, right? Because theta tilde is unknown, and if your parameter update law theta hat dot contains the unknown, then you've not designed an adaptive controller at all. You've just designed a controller. Okay. Uh, so so you, you take in uh, in the z2 term all the quantities which do not have a theta tilde in them. So this is the only thing that gets left out. Everything else remains. Yeah. And then this guy comes from here. So that's what is the term here. And then I club the terms in theta tilde separately. So that's one term. Then this term gets combined. Right. So that is uh, this guy here. Right. Uh, and then I also get a term here. Right. Remember. I also get a term from the first state, right? And up, that appears here, right? The term from the second state appears here. And then of course this term in the unknown quantity. Now something really nice and neat has happened, right? I mean, if you look at these terms, already have a nice negative quadratic in Z1 in the first state. And in the second state, I have the control. So I can introduce a quadratic by canceling all these quantities because none of it depends on the unknown. So I cancel them, you know, comfortably and I introduce a nice negative term. Right. And the third term is an uncertain or, a, you know, I mean, it's not a sign definite term. I really do not know uh, what kind of sign it will have. Right. So I do not. Uh, you know, concern myself about trying to make it negative, definite and things like that. Right? So all I will do is I'll simply try to push it to zero. And this is what uh, anyway is our um, goal in typical nonlinear control, right? Whichever terms you see are not uh, sign definite, you will um, usually try to push them to zero. Right? So that's the idea. So that's what I do. I use my theta cap dot in order to cancel these terms and that's what I get. Now if you look at this very carefully this term right so it has two terms in it earlier you had two separate estimates and the first estimate contained gamma x1 fx1 as the first update law had gamma x1 fx1 notice and that's here gamma x1 fx1 just in different notation the second update law, uh, that is the mu hat dot, right, contained, uh, you know, something a little bit more complicated, right, which is uh, the z term, if you may, 
right? This is the Z2, the way we've defined. So it's a sigma Z2F times some this quantity, right? Times this quantity. So if you look at this guy, you have Z2 times a gamma times this quantity, right? It's, it's actually the same quantity, right? Yeah, it, it's just that there is, uh, you know, there seemingly is an additional, uh, you know, piece here, which is the K1 term, which we don't have. Yeah, I mean, which we don't seem to have here, right? Um, yeah, which looks like we don't have this K1 term, right? Why did, I'm just trying to uh, look at why we get the K1 term. Uh, that comes from the control here and that comes in from yeah i think that comes in from somehow this x2 desired dot term all right so that somehow comes in from the x2 desired dot term and i i believe that uh we uh I believe if I look at it carefully, this term is exactly the same as what we have earlier. Okay, this term is exactly the same because um, if I look at what was alpha one here, so let me look at what was alpha one here. Now uh, let me try to evaluate in that sense. So alpha one was this guy. Okay, alpha one was exactly this guy. Okay, uh, so. I can mark this as my alpha one, right? So I will write it as such. So in the in week seven, alpha one was actually minus k one x one minus theta hat f x one minus theta hat f x one. So what I will do is I will try to evaluate. As we already have seen that the first term is identical, so I want to evaluate the second term, yeah, to show that this is also identical to the second update law. We saw that the first term was identical to the first update law, and what I want to do is to show that the second term is identical to the second update law, right? So let me compute del alpha 1, del x1, and that's minus k1 minus theta cap del f del x1 right so this term becomes gamma z1 phi x1 plus or minus z2 so we our f is actually equal to phi remember so i'm going to write this as phi here we used phi instead of an f that's okay minus z2 k1 plus theta cap del phi del x1 times phi x1 yeah that's what would be what you would get for the week 7 type control and if you look at the second update law that was the mu hat dot it's the same right it's sigma some gain which is gamma in our case Right, it's the same. You have gamma. Wait a second. I will remove this. Yeah, you have the same. You have the gamma. Then you have the Z2, which is this guy. Z2. And then you have exactly a phi fx1, which is the phi x1. Then you have k1 plus theta cap del phi del x1 k1 plus theta cap del phi del x1 so this is uh, exactly the same term right so it's not worry about the signages so much but what you see is you have exactly the same term as the second update law, right so that's really the idea of what has happened uh, because uh, by not choosing a v1 and a theta cap dot in the first step is that we have obtained a theta cap dot uh, which is essentially just an addition of the two update laws. Right? There we had two parameter estimates and two update laws. So we have essentially obtained the same, uh, you know, two update laws added together for theta cap dot in this case. Yeah. So this is rather cool. Yeah. I mean, we didn't have to, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, actually designed two different estimates yeah and it almost seemed like uh, a posteriori once i look at this it seems like it's almost just a you know uh, i mean why did we even do the previous method is what you would think all right so once we actually have done this right have actually implemented this theta cap dot and this u what we have is that you get a nice negative term here and a nice negative term from the second piece and this goes to zero so i have a nice negative definite negative semi definite v dot just like you expect in all adaptive control and from standard signal chasing arguments what you can show is that z1 that is x1 goes to zero and z2 that's the backstepping error actually goes to zero and if you remember what is alpha one alpha one is again uh, this guy i mean this guy theta hat phi x1 minus c1 x1 so this is um, x2 go minus theta hat phi x1 minus c1 x1 right let me see yeah goes to zero right now i already know that uh, x1 is going to zero now if i also assume that phi zero is zero that is when x1 goes to zero this quantity becomes zero then this guy will also go to zero and therefore you will be able to claim that x2 goes to zero as t goes to infinity and that's essentially what you want you want all the states to go to zero yeah again we are looking at the stabilization problem the tracking problem would have been no different yeah uh, but so in this case we are concerned with the states x1 and x2 actually going to zero and then and you obtain that and that's essentially what you wanted and that's essentially what you obtain so this is uh, sort of the extended matching method and right? the idea is rather simple you avoid uh, you know designing the first level parameter estimate and the first level candidate lyapunov function and you simply go to the next step and directly design a uh, complete system Lyapunov candidate function and this actually helps you with uh, you know removing one of the parameter estimates and you also find that structurally the parameter estimate uh, that you get is ident is I mean parameter update law that you get is essentially contains the sum of the two parameter update laws from last time all right now so that's sort of you know something cool right so uh, this is the sort of closed loop dynamics you would get if you actually plug in everything and put everything in place yeah this is the sort of closed loop dynamics you would get now one of the uh, issues that you have is that uh, basically you when you look at the control law right here the control law is not appearing so if you look at the control law here uh, you can see that there is a theta cap dot which appears now this theta cap dot appears because the unknown parameter is one step above the control right now it's not difficult to see just by looking at the uh, pattern that if the control appears uh, two steps below the unknown parameter then a theta cap double dot will appear and so on and so forth okay and usually you know i mean it is not considered very healthy to have derivatives of quantities and these uh, can lead to amplification of noise right uh, so you notice that this does not ha happen in the uh, week seven method right in the week seven method there is no theta cap dot that appears in the control law and this is a good thing in the non-extended case but in the extended case this extended matching design this is a problem okay so it's not exactly uh, apples to apples there is a slight difference that the control law which sort of gets hidden in the closed loop dynamics contains the theta cap dot which can lead to problems in implementation 
yeah and these uh, as you go to control which is lower and lower below the unknown parameter in the dynamics then the theta cap double dot triple dot and, and then multiple derivatives and higher and higher derivatives of theta cap will start to appear all right so i mean keep this in mind yeah so this is a sort of nice exercise uh, anyway i mean these will i mean i recommend that you do this. this is an aerodynamic model for a wing and you want to try to use the typical integrator backstepping and also the extended matching method in order to uh, do a stabilization of this uh, model yeah that's the idea so this is the reference for this uh, set of lectures yeah, very very useful uh, so i strongly recommend that you look at these notes yeah so anyway so what did we do this time uh, in this set uh, of lectures today is that we looked at the extended matching design method right and what the extended matching design method does is to uh, sort of uh, reduce the number of parameters that you're in, trying to estimate. So you are uh, still have just one estimate for one parameter or one set of parameters. So you do not have a larger number of estimates than the number of parameters. The problem we see that we end up with is that you find higher derivatives of the update law which may or may not be convenient in implementation because of noise issues etc etc all right so uh, keep this in mind so nothing is free right so we hid some issues in the control law itself yeah uh, but other than that yes we reduce the number of states in the controller and this is of course a significant advantage uh, when you're looking at implementations all right Great. So this is where we'll stop now. Uh, we'll continue in the subsequent session. Thank you.